I don't know how to put it to you, we are not the factor we once were. As a matter of fact, in some places, we're not a factor at all. It's been a slow but progressive slide over the last 30 or 40 years. So it's not associated specifically with one prime minister. It's not just a fading power, it is a faded power and has become essentially irrelevant. I think, however, that in the last 10 years where the spending cuts have been more dramatic, the slide has been more dramatic. There's been a lot of activity, uh, but nobody's listening, nobody's paying attention. I heard it from diplomats in the halls. I heard it from bureaucrats at the United Nations. It was painful for them as well as for me because their view of Canada is vastly more romantic than you would imagine. There's a very bad fit between our self-image and what we actually deliver. We think we're better peacekeepers than we are. We think we're better at development assistance and helping poor countries than we are. And we think we're innocent. We think nobody could possibly hate or want to kill a Canadian. On all three grounds, we got to wake up. It is my opinion that it's an era of the middle powers now. If military action proceeds without a new resolution of the Security Council, Canada will not participate. I think one of the great steps taken by the Prime Minister was saying, OK, we're not, we're not going to the Iraq exercise. The failing, I think, is, is that instead of sending people on the terrorism exercise into Afghanistan, we should have sent them to the Congo. Can you imagine 2,800 Canadian soldiers with all their skills going into that mission? It would be the backbone of the mission. It would make or break that mission. And I would like to see somebody of the world power saying, hey, why are you sending people to the Congo when we got this fight going on here? The response is, the problem going on there needs all that capability, which we don't inherently have. But our greatest influence for you and for humanity is to go there and make sure that stuff doesn't turn into a cesspool. So we have been given a leadership role in the world that for some reason, we don't want to take on the mantra. Even when I was at UNICEF from 95 to 99, we talked often privately within UNICEF, how do you get the Canadian government to live up to a larger contribution? We could win on some of our positions because then we were prepared to pay for them. And for a long time, we were still seen, even though we were cutting back, 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 we were still seen as serious. And I think around the mid-90s it got to the point where it wasn't serious anymore, that we were sending people to the table with serious positions, but with no money to pay for them. Every fraction of a point represents tens of millions of dollars because our gross domestic product is so large. So if you drop from point four to point three, you're dropping hundreds of millions. We've still done the right thing at the right time from time to time, but we've had no financial muscle, and that has been a crippling, wounding factor. No one in Ottawa would have imagined that uh, 10 years ago, that there would come a time when Canada wasn't even listed in the top 10. We needed to get rid of that deficit and that debt. There's no question about that. Canada would not have been a healthy economic power. And I do accept the thesis that you have to put your own house in order. But when do you emerge from that? Uh, when every last penny in the debt is paid? They're hard trade-offs. You know, everybody would rather spend money on roads and schools and hospitals and bridges at home rather than in Zimbabwe or Zambia. I think politicians have to reflect the real interests of the, the public that they serve. And uh, 
I guess this means that they perceive that Canadians are a good deal less interested in the larger world. With the arrival of Canadian General E.L.M. Burns, who will command the UN force of 6,000, preparations for keeping the peace swing into high gear. Suez uh, 1956 was a, a big Canadian moment, but these moments don't happen every Wednesday. I mean, you really you, you can't be, uh, expect the, 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 the movie to come around in that form over and over again. It doesn't do that. It's very easy to tell this as a story straight down from the heights of Mike Pearson's Nobel Prize. It's been, you know, declension ever since. I'm, n I'm not so sure. I think the reality was always harsher. Canada has, there's no question, a greater presence in the world than a lot of other countries. The point is, what's appropriate for a country of our size, a country of our wealth? Talk is cheap. What isn't cheap is taxing your citizens in order to build up that military uh, capability. You'll be more effective uh, diplomatically if you have a stronger military, yes, but, they, but, it, but it comes with a cost comes with a big cost. It is very important that Canada have soft power as, as part of its methodology. But you, ha you still have to have a vision, you know, because soft power um, is like multilateralism. It's an implement. It's a means. It's not an end. What are you going to use the soft power for? You've got these assets of, of soft power. You need a, a decent minimum of military power to show that you're serious to people who think in those terms. Uh, but I think any, your, your advice won't always be taken. Your noise, your views won't always be accepted. Um, but you, you, you will persevere. I mean, it's very important that you should. We could decide as a country that we'd r rather sink into kind of genteel oblivion. That's a choice we could make. I don't think it's the right choice, but it's a perfectly respectable choice. We could decide we want, gun we want butter at home, we want hospitals at home, roads and schools, we don't want to spend it overseas, fine. But let's make the choice clearly. If we make that choice, then we shouldn't whine and complain and bitch about the fact that nobody's paying us any, at any attention. They've got no reason to pay us attention until we stump up the goods that measure real influence and leverage in the world.